the poor quality of workmanship of all components of the cooling system and gaskets of power units, wiring and most of the attachments makes itself felt. Failures of the cooling system due to standing fans, crack tanks and aging of rubber and plastic are common for caliber. All this manifests itself less with good care, but, as we said above, a cheap car rarely receives decent service. So most of the troubles with motors happen due to breakdowns of auxiliary equipment. In our country, caliber is found only with motors of the world engine family, a volume of 2.0 liters, 158 to 160 horsepower, of the ECN series, 2.4 liters, 170 to 175 horsepower, with the ED3 index. The weakest unit, the atmospheric EBA series, with a volume of 1.8 liters develops 148 horsepower, and the most powerful turbocharged ED4 on the SRT4 with a volume of 2.4 liters produces 285 horsepower. All engines are made on a budget, but are simple and functional. The resource is moderate, about 200 to 300,000 before the appearance of oil appetite for atmospheric options and only 120 to 150,000 for a 285 horsepower turbo engine. The main reason for the Maslozora is regular overheating and rather weak material of the piston rings. In addition, the rings are corny coked. Also, the crankcase ventilation system simply crumbles after six years of operation. There are almost no problems with the availability of spare parts since almost all the main elements, including gaskets and valve covers, come from the Mitsubishi 4B1 engine. Formally, the caliber engines are disposable since there are no proprietary repair sizes for them. The official version involves the replacement of a short block or pistons of the original size, and the craftsmen have long mastered the replacement of pistons with regular ones with a sleeve. There are also repair dimensions of the non-factory piston group on sale. Unfortunately, American motors do not have the best block threads and often require a lot of extra work to repair. There is no tendency for early scuffing like Hyundai sister Theta slash Theta 2 units, but overheating and intake leaks can lead to the same result. In addition, the casting of the block and the machining of almost all elements are noticeably worse here, from the crankshaft plate to the mating areas. All this contributes to leaks and complicates assembly. Another nuisance that constantly haunts caliber owners is the breakdown of the electronic throttle, gears made of brittle plastic brake inside. Alas, not only the mechanical part is poorly made, the electronic board and the drive motor also fail, and often. The price of a new throttle bites, and almost all used ones are worn out. Non-original ones are made worse than Mopar, although it is also Chinese, and inherit all the design flaws. Of the minor problems of motors, one can note constantly floating valve clearances and the need to adjust them every 30 to 40,000 kilometers. And it's better to have a sensitive ear and, at the first sign of valve tapping, adjust them without relying on an optimistic maintenance schedule. The resource of the timing chain mechanism is not a record one, about 200,000 kilometers, and even the phase regulators begin to knock unpredictably. Summary, caliber gasoline engines on cars older than 10 years require too many parts and costs. Fortunately, many elements come from Hyundai and Mitsubishi, and there the situation with spare parts is noticeably better. The used oil pumps are usually not so worn out. Chains, phase regulators, rings, gaskets, all this is a little more reliable for the Koreans and Japanese, and even cheaper in the original. In Russia, there are practically no diesel calibers, but it is unlikely that the German diesel Volkswagen 2.0 TDI under the hood of Dodge has become worse. The advantages of this version include fuel efficiency and more interesting dynamic characteristics against the background of gasoline modifications with 2.0 and even more so 1.8 engines. Brakes on caliber for the domestic American market and Europe are very different in design. Europeans relied on disc mechanisms at the front and rear, with the front discs having a solid diameter of 296 millimeters. For the Americans everything is simpler. 276 mm discs in front and drums in the rear. True, the service life of both brake mechanisms is not very long and spare parts for American versions are not always easy to find. The brakes do not like dirt at all 
and if they go more or less tolerably in the city, then the primers finish them off quickly. The handbrake is made in the form of a small drum inside the disc. The only troubles here are the short service life of the pads and the chance that the springs of the mechanism will simply rot over time and the pads will begin to dangle inside. ABS is quite reliable, mainly leads to the wiring to the sensors and the engine compartment harness. Brake lines are also worth checking. They rot in the area of backslash U200B backslash U200B fuel tank, and for some cars the pipes are long overdue for replacement. The pendant makes an ambivalent impression. On the one hand, the controllability of the car is set up without such miscalculations, as it was with the Mitsubishi ASX platform. On the other hand, the design is extremely dependent on clearance and load. A constant increase in mass leads to drawdown and even breakage of the springs. Regular driving over bumps and increased suspension articulation also reduce the resource at times. All front suspension arms and trailing arms in the rear, in fact, have one correct position that provides maximum resource. In addition, they are relatively thin and not protected from corrosion. Small and overloaded rear arms also do not have a margin of safety for a long service life. As a result, after five to seven years of operation, the regular replacement of silent blocks and levers begins in a circle. Yes, and other suspension elements are made on a budget. The resource of shock absorbers is small, and any damage to the anthers leads to a quick failure. The subframes are weak and eventually rot into dust. The load on the delicate wheel bearings is high. So they have a relatively small resource by 100,000 mileage, replacements can begin. Therefore, the choice of disc offset must be approached responsibly. Anthers of ball bearings do not like even excessive moisture, not to mention the forcing of deep water barriers. With quality service, meticulous control, and a comprehensive approach to repair, read SKD repair with replacement of lever assemblies, the suspension can be in good condition after a decent run, but in most cases the car is poorly maintained and cheap components are used. As a result, the chassis requires attention at intervals of 20 to 30,000 kilometers, and this, of course, causes dissatisfaction with the owners. A separate nuance with spare parts, Chrysler produces them only in large units. Levers exclusively assembled, no separate silent blocks and ball joints. Of course, you can buy them, but count on third tier brands and the corresponding quality. For Mitsubishi, the choice is wider, but not all parts fit the caliber without modifications, which means that most services will not help the owner. You can only rely on specific club services and private traders, or on independent work with a preliminary immersion in all the nuances of the repair. A conventional hydraulic rack from Mopar can surprise. On the caliber, it doesn't just rattle and flow, sometimes it just explodes with oil and wedges. And with a certain effort, drivers still sometimes turn it off. The pump is strong, the lines are not bad, but still there are a lot of shortcomings for such a common design. Fortunately, the rail is maintainable. It is important not to bring the teeth to cranking and crumbling when the rod is jammed. The resource between high quality bulkheads and careful handling is solid. You can count on 150 to 200,000, but if there are wedges, you shouldn't delay. And check the rack for oil leaks. This is the first symptom of impending trouble. External CV joints of front drives do not last long. They were not lubricated at the factory. There are replaceable ones on sale, and not very expensive, so you can survive the trouble. But the internal CV joints, although more reliable, are not sold separately. And with the selection of spare parts can be difficult. The most common manual transmission, which was installed with all engines, except for the most powerful supercharged one, is T355. And it's not the most reliable unit. A typical malfunction is a failure of the output shaft bearing on the side of the rear cover. But more and more often there are breakdowns of the remaining bearings, and the secondary shaft itself often lifts up. Along the way, differential bearings and synchronizers suffer. With runs over 200,000 kilometers, you will almost certainly have to change the hydraulic clutch release, the working surface of which is literally torn apart by the pedals of the basket. The Gitrag mechanics on the SRT4 version are also far from ideal. 
Due to problems with lubrication, the bearings of the cover, shafts, and the cover itself fail. There is little information on this transmission, but the nuances are similar to those of the Opel Astra J. The Jacko JF011ECVT is quite strong, especially when compared to those that are being produced now. Like all transmissions of this type, CVT does not tolerate sudden changes in load, operation without warming up, and other harsh operating conditions. But with good service, careful handling, timely resolved problems with the valve and the oil pump, more on this below, and replacing the step motor, it can please with a good resource at the level of traditional automatic transmissions. Even if you just change the oil at least once every 60,000, avoid overheating, and do not overload, then the unit will almost certainly live up to 200,000. Not bad for today. Acceleration dynamics and traction at the maximum gear ratio for versions with cones before 2009 are not very good, but in general, the simplicity and low cost of all elements, except for the belt, outweigh the disadvantages. When choosing a car, a dealer scanner or software like CVT Z50 will help, which allows you to see the most important parameters of the box even with the simplest OBDI adapter. The list of potential troubles looks daunting, but only at first glance. The main problem is the wear of the belt and the surface of the cones. In this case, it is easier to replace the entire variator, or you will have to decide on expensive repairs. The main reason for such breakdowns, in addition to overloads, is the failure of the oil pump. And it happens mainly due to a malfunction of the pressure reducing valve. So the problem with pressure needs to be solved immediately, fortunately this is checked by software. The reason for wear of the pressure reducing valve and the oil pump itself is metallic dirt in the oil, where products of the belt and cones. They also finish off the shaft bearings, step motor and solenoids. So the oil must be kept clean. This means not only replacing it frequently, but it is highly advisable to install an external replaceable filter. Unfortunately, few owners do not at least overload the variator when cold, not to mention taking more drastic measures to increase its service life. Cars with all-wheel drive come across so rarely that it is difficult to isolate the main malfunctions. But at least there are breakdowns of both the angular gearbox and the drive clutch. At first glance, the epithet body like a ziguli in relation to the Dodge Caliber would be a slander. Formally, the American has both galvanization and the metal is painted with high quality, even the coating retains its shine for a long time. Only now the varnish can eventually begin to peel off the bumpers and between the body panels, except that a finger does not fit. It is objectively far from the minimum gaps familiar to Europeans and paint firmly adhering to plastic. Sometimes the bodies of cars that have not even been in accidents look crooked. At one time there was even a legend about this. They say, difficult delivery conditions to Russia are to blame for everything. It's hard to believe in it, but my friends actually received a new car with such a crooked body. Perhaps the issue is the weak design of the power frame or poor work on securing the car on the ship. If the fasteners are over tightened and there is an uneven surface under the wheels, then the body may move. One way or another, the doors of that example closed somehow, and it was not possible to get gaps like a normal new car. And acquaintances were far from the only victims, although many did not refuse such cars, but used them, it's new. However, the saddest thing is that the body corrodes, despite the galvanization and the use of strictly American materials for paintwork and American steel. First of all, the thresholds and arches rot, and also all the joints of the wing panels and bumpers. The edge of the roof, the places of chipped paintwork, the lower parts and edges of the doors are not far behind in the rate of corrosion. Bugs crawl out on all external surfaces, including the flat part of the roof. Corrosion does not spare the hood frame, the trunk lid under the plastic lining and along the lower edge. Dodge without touch-ups, rust and original thresholds in our area will soon become a rarity. In the southern regions, where cars do not see not only salt, but even snow, there is still a little, but thresholds and doors rot and the edges of the roof and hood bloom. Even the cars of recent years come across numerous bugs, and sometimes outright holes, to say nothing of copies of the first issues. The condition also does not directly depend on the asking price. 
Options from the top 10 most expensive flaunt about the same set of troubles as cheap ones. Among the latter, you can even find something more interesting, without traces of budget repair of thresholds and hastily covering up problem areas. The main thing is to look patiently and strictly in the southern regions. Sometimes you come across garage storage cars with high-quality anti-corrosive made immediately after purchase. But these are single offers, and they diverge among the fans very quickly. It is difficult to find the ideal, rather, you can count on the best of the worst. The point is both in the economy of the manufacturer and in the design. For example, the design of the rear arch, in which it is covered by a door, always leads to early corrosion. A similar problem haunts, for example, Land Rover Freelander 2, Skoda Yeti, and Opel Omega B. Well, the rubber seals that swell from the corrosion of the frame are just a classic of the American automotive industry, and in many ways Japanese. If you buy caliber north of the Krasnodar territory, then a thorough inspection of the body is required. No viewings in the evening, assessments of the condition from a photo or a wet or dirty car. And an endoscope is very useful to look into thresholds and hidden cavities. The bottom of the body as a whole holds up well, but surface corrosion is present on almost all elements, places near the seams and small brackets are completely rusty, like all the numerous studs. Red patina in the arches and even on the seams are trifles for caliber. The fringe along the bottom of the inside of the arch is a real nuisance. And the mounting bracket for the TPMS tire pressure monitoring system sensor in the front arch simply rots, and it hangs on the wiring. Looking for a Dodge Caliber without corrosion from below is completely useless. At best, meet a specimen in which the metal is still relatively intact. If desired, you can clean up problem areas without resorting to welding, or just drive for a few more years, updating the penetrating anti-corrosive. And in five years, there will probably be a lot of cars with rotten floors on the market. In the case of thresholds, the situation is already critical. They rot from the inside, and the threshold amplifier suffers at the same time. When red dots appear at the bottom of the threshold, there are already layers of loose wet rust inside the cavity, and painting the outside is completely useless. It remains only to open and digest with cleaning all the damaged elements inside. The causes of the troubles lie in poor ventilation and the complete lack of anti-corrosion treatment of internal cavities. The thin layer of primer inside is not completely painted over, and the outside of the threshold is thin and delicate paintwork without a layer of anti-gravel. Galvanization is performed only on the outside, and the galvanized coating is extremely thin. No measures are taken to ensure that it does not burn out at the welding points during assembly at the factory rust climbs around the welding points in the first place. The front suspension cups rot along the fastening studs and along the seams. Moreover, the seams can rot both from the side of the mudguard of the engine compartment and from the side of the engine shield and the upper spar amplifier, how lucky. The reasons are banal, poor protection of the seams, accumulation of debris and water in the niche above the engine and lack of maintenance. Not very accurate stamping and the internal stresses of the panels arising for this reason, as well as inaccurately placed seam sealant, also affect. Everything looks as if the body was assembled by hand, and the panels were made on worn-out dies. In general, all the delights of a budget American assembly. Somewhere in California, this would be the least of the troubles, but here it is the body that fails first. Dealers also did not carry out additional processing. In any case, there are few specimens with a good preservation of thresholds. Almost all successful cars have a transparent service history and have been preserved only thanks to the care of the owners. Quality in the details is not about Dodge. Here the locks are delicate and open work plastic brackets were used in the windows, which regularly fall apart. And the plastic lining of the trunk lid rests on parole, they constantly break out the fasteners. Don't be surprised by sagging bumpers due to bad fasteners, weak door hinges, and a skewed windshield. The number of minor breakdowns that awaits each owner of such a machine is quite large. Not all elements have purely age-related problems. 
Many are simply flimsy and prone to failure. Something does not like cold weather and snow. Bumpers are corny badly painted, and unsuccessful fastenings do not tolerate any contacts. Windshield wipers are just very cheap. The front wipers are best left off when the windshield is covered with snow. And the back one, if the brush is frozen to the glass or the mechanism is jammed due to corrosion, its body will break. In the homeland of the car, all these elements are at least cheap, but our delivery times and prices do not contribute to a calm attitude towards such small things. If we leave behind a specific design and very low wear resistance of the steering wheel and seats, then the interior is very good. There's a lot of cheap plastic here, but it's roomy and has a certain style to it. In comparison, even with cheap European cars, the interior is poor and the steady of small elements suffers, but fans of budget Renaults and even some Japanese and Koreans will not have any special complaints. It is unlikely that they will find fault with the fact that many buttons are not highlighted, the levers work with the wrong sound, or that the driver's seat lift is missing in budget trim levels. But here is a fun dashboard, it's comfortable to sit, a lot of space for small things, and a nice steering wheel. To kill such a salon is also difficult. If it is not washed with a hose and polished with sandpaper, it retains its appearance for a long time. A killer air conditioner helps to reduce the amount of dust entering the cabin through the windows, it literally freezes to the bone. The climate is usually simple and does not cause trouble, except that occasionally something from the electrical harness breaks. The electrical equipment of the car is also extremely simple, and this is rather a plus. It's just that the quality of performance has failed. The engine compartment wiring runs in the right wheel arch above the locker, and it successfully rots in this area. In front of the wheel, in the same wheel arch, there is a cooling system fan relay unit, and it also does not live long in our dirt and moisture. The relay box is connected to the wiring to the headlights. In the engine compartment wiring, the harnesses are sometimes destroyed, since the quality of the wires and plastic insulation is very mediocre. And, of course, the wires in the corrugations of the doors break, especially the drivers and rear ones. Wiring sometimes fails in the most unexpected places, an unsealed connector on the box or a falling apart salon braid connector, poorly crimped at the factory, may come across. And, of course, do not put grease in the connectors. Another of the common breakdowns is the massively dying backlight of the dashboard and sometimes the pointer arrows. The backlight of the emergency gang button does not work for almost everyone and the buttons themselves often fail. The central lock block is separate here and sometimes also breaks. What is unpleasant, rotting wiring and block relays are involved in important circuits so that the machine may periodically not start due to their failures. Otherwise, the problems are simple. The majority will be dealt with by a person who knows how to use a regular tester. The main thing is that the machine does not burn out due to short circuits. Of the pleasant things, reliable generators, as well as the presence of a regular rechargeable flashlight. True, the battery in it needs to be changed periodically. But it is convenient to repair a car in the dark on the side of the road. 